Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you can reach Tim every trading day, folks, at Ord, O R D, dash Oracle.com. That's Ord, dash Oracle.com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, we got a. I'm getting a lot of emails here over the last couple of days, which. Uh, I bet you are. Well, the. Not ideal emails because I know. of the gold market. For some reason, everybody's uh, really worried here, and that's usually a good sign. Um, so, actually, we'll, we'll start with uh, we'll kind of just go through this one more time. Yeah, well, so hey, we let's 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 talk about this for one. a second, Tim. Let's just talk about this for a second because you know, the, yesterday there's no doubt that you know the equities were holding up, gold was holding up, even in you know in this aspect with the market pulling back. But they both got destroyed yesterday, right? So, yep. in the context of you know years past, right? Because you you know you've been doing this a long time, and we know that the deal is is that when there's fear, that's when you're actually going to be buying. So let's let's talk about the aspect of the yeah, the amount of emails that you are getting versus the ones in the past, because we both know. You know, and anyone else out there, and we have a lot of listeners that are trade gold and silver. This is what always happens, folks. It's like, and I always is, you know, I shouldn't use that word, but I can tell you, it's, you think you're going to take off, you go down again. You think you're going to take off, you go down again. And then you take off and go to the freaking moon, you know. Right. So, yeah, so it, it, it's in a while, I mean, it's, you know, so, so in that aspect, where are you in the context of the emails? <laughs> you know, like from a uh, one to uh, ten. This is kind of, a, I guess, common experience. Actually, the the more emails I get, the more solid that bottom has become. Yes. And I had these in the past, you know. But, you know, a week from now, if the market does rally like I think it will, it'll all be forgotten. Oh, for all sure. The, no, the, no, no. All listen. The hate stuff is like they just flip, and now I'm the greatest guy in the whole world. Oh, listen. So, I please. Listen, we've both been doing it long enough. I know that it's like, you know, this time here and the time before, okay, maybe both times when the, you know, the GDX was going, the rest of them were going, I said, oh, this looks like it's going to be it. Both times is like, nope, I'm going to flush you down the freaking toilet again. <laughs> yeah. um, and we know that what happens, folks, is that you know that you're getting closer and closer. And, and like I said, it's easy for Tim and I to actually say this because we're in a much longer situation, you know what I mean? And you know, if you're at the beginning of your career doing this, it's like, oh, my God, it's the end of the world if you're over your head. But if you're not over your head, what ends up happening is that you need these types of flush outs, which I know none of us like. But the reality is, is that, OK, once one of these flush outs, when they come back, they come back with a vengeance, you know. So right. I, I was just, Actually, you know, the. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, I was just curious in the context of, you know, how many get. I know I'm not getting any gold calls, so that's really positive, too, you know. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's probably like August of last year. It's kind of, similarity, kind of similarities to that. Yeah. So, and there was a low last August, and it bounced up, and in, in ABC, now we've kind of been going down since uh, a while. But actually, let's just look at the short term. Uh, skip to chart three. Okay. Because that's kind of... Which is which? It kind of explains where everything's going on. And what I did, uh, this chart goes back to uh, end of 2022. So it's about nine months. But you know, you make the chart too big and it gets too much cluttered. But I want to point out that if you look at that uh, pink area in February, March. Yes. Uh, so anyhow, the GDX, which is the top window, made a little bit lower low. And both those indicators, window one and window two, made higher lows. Um, I see. I, I didn't really pick. Uh, I didn't pick up the top, but uh, well, it actually did pick up the top. But we're not going to screw around with the tops. So we're just going to look at the bottoms. Yeah. Because uh, that's kind of what we're in right now. So if you go back, go into uh, June and beginning of July, uh, GDX made lower lows, obviously. I got a red arrow pointing that down. And both those indicators made higher lows. So, and now you flip to the current period. Uh, GDX has made a lower low than the August low, and both those indicators made higher lows. So we have a lot of similarities going on. 
Now, you need to get the blue areas when both indicators are above minus 10, and the red areas when the indicators, both indicators are below minus 10. Right now, we're below minus, minus 10 on both indicators, but you're making, on both those indicators, you're making higher lows where GDX is making lower lows. And that's a similar happen in the past, in the past lows. And that just looks at the short term picture. And that's, so and that, we're that, gonna look at the bigger, Tim, bigger pictures that, of pay, or, uh, page one, or uh, charts one and two. But anyhow, that's a short term picture. And and that's uh, that's a that's a that's a good divergence, correct? Yeah, it's yeah. a good divergence. You right. know, it, it's worked in the past, and the bigger the divergence, the normally uh, right. the more worthwhile it is. Uh, so it's a uh, you know we're breaking new lows. Both those indicators, that ex those both indicators measure the advanced decline. You know, advanced to decline, and also measures the up down volume. And that's what makes a market up down right. volume, advanced decline. Right. So even though the market GDX is a little bit weaker, breaking uh, to a minor new low, both those indicators on the advanced decline and up down volume are making higher lows. And in the past, that's uh, usually uh, yep. a bullish sign going forward. Pretty cool, man. So, yep. I yeah. like it. I so, like it. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, so, so anyhow, but, but, but we, we can look at the bigger picture. I don't know if we have time, um, but it, it's the same uh, scenario I've been showing, which is that bullish percent index slash gold miners index. Uh, both the weekly and the daily are giving bicycles in this area, and they don't tell you exactly what day it is. Right, but the weeklies gave, gave a buy back on August 28th, so that's over a month ago, or it actually is a month ago. Yeah, and it's still hovering in the same area, so it's it's uh, nothing's really changed here. Just just stay right so. there, Tim. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We're gonna be right, coming right back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now is trading up 193. Nasdaq's up 150. S and P's are up 36. Uh, stay right there, folks. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and prowl on us. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at ord-oracle.com. He has a great newsletter, so check it out. Uh, so uh, I am on the bigger picture now, Tim. I, I, you can right. just tell me where to go, actually. Uh, actually, I just sent you over a chart, chart six. Okay. And uh, I sent it to uh, Tommy and uh, Jacob and you. Perfect. Uh, did you pull it? Can you pull it up? I can get it. Yes, I can. One second. If not, we, we, we can talk about chart four. Let, let's talk about chart four right now, and I'll have Jacob get this in the, the, the thing for me. One, two, three, four. Okay. Go ahead. Let's do yeah, four, four first. Yeah, yeah, let's do four. It's, okay, this is uh, the SPY goes back, uh, looks like about two years or whatever. And... The, the bottom window is the five day average of the trend, and I got a, a square box around that one, and the next window up is the 10 day average of the trend. And uh, the 10 day average uh, trend, uh, 1.2 and higher is bullish. Uh, two days ago, we hit 1.9. You know, it's, it's barely there, but it's there. But the five day never reached that. I think it got to one point. Two six or something. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's not you know you you like the the more panic you get the the better it is. But this chart, uh, the bottom or at least the second window up leans is bullish, and the bottom window leans bullish. I prefer to be higher, so it's kind of a you know we're close. You know, and also look, uh, you're closer. The more panic you get, the better off you are. Right. So, you, you know, if you can get these five-day trends up to around 1.5 and higher, you're screaming at a bottom. Right. You know, uh, you know 1.26, is that close enough? Maybe. Uh, a trend, you know, a 10-day trend up around 1.6 is a lot better than 1.2 because you got a lot more panic. You got, you know, more people screaming at you. Sure. Uh, but, you know, 1.12 1. history shows it's usually a good number. Or one, yeah, one point two. So we're probably making a little. But if you look at the SPY charts, I got a line drawn across, across there at one. Okay, so uh, four point two zero. Tim, I get the I get this the, the new chart up for you. Okay, let's just let's just flip to that. Okay, I have it up. Okay, so there's different ways to ma measure panic. You can do it with a trend and ticks. Yeah. You know, uh, trends one point two or higher is usually panic. But you can also do it with a VIX. 
acceleration of the VIX actually is panic. The, the faster that VIX goes up, the more panic is present. So when you go in the bottoms, you know, the VIX goes right through the ceiling. Right. So the faster it goes, the more panic there is because everybody's trying to get out the, you know, the cell door at the same time. Yes. And that VIX measures that. So what I did was I, I put a few indicators on, on the uh, VIX. One is the RSI. You know, it gets up around 70. That's the acceleration of the VIX. And also I do it uh, uh, next. That's the bottom window. The next okay. window up is the rate of change. And I got a two-period rate of change. It gets up around 30. That's usually, you know, acceleration of the VIX. And I also did a, a Bollinger Band. In other words, if it's a top Bollinger Band, that's when it gets above one. And that's also acceleration. So you need, I showed this chart before in the past, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. And it usually does a pretty good job identifying where lows are. All those lines, those red lines on the chart, show the times where two of the three, if not all three of those indicators, uh, flipped into bullish territory. Okay. You know, if you if you notice, if you all look back there, you know, it, it all, the album came near lows. Right. And we hit that. Uh, we hit that uh, yesterday, a day before. We had acceleration of that VIX going straight up. And we got two of the three. We got the RSI hitting uh, 70. We also got the upper Bollinger Band being hit. Yeah, and I just so, put up the Bollinger Bands of the VIX. And you can see it. I mean, last two days, no doubt, yeah. it went right outside them. And, yeah, I got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so when it gets above one, you're up, you're up above the upper Bollinger Band. When it gets below uh, zero, you're below the Bollinger Band. When you're at 50, you're at the midpoint of the... Bollinger Band, which is that line. Yes. So this is another form of, you know, not all indicators work all the time, so I'm always looking for, you know, I know what the market needs to do to get a bottom. It needs to panic. Right. And so the, the more indicators you can find that show panic is present, the more lightly or the, the more, I, I guess, right you can be, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking we're setting out a low here. You know, my, my, my thought is, is the low yesterday? Or do we go down and test that low? Right. Yeah, and that's the dilemma I got here. And if you notice, no, I know. Uh, and, and, you look and, on the SP, and so yes, uh, yesterday chart. Uh, I don't know if you can do that or not, but you know we're testing a gap down of uh, two days ago. We gap down. We're testing that gap right now. Right. If the gap's going to be tested in a lighter volume, at least ten percent of lighter volume, that gap's probably going to be resistance. And there's a good chance we can test yesterday's low. And chance that we test yesterday's low, that's probably going to be the bottom. Right. Um, because yesterday, yesterday's and, low is a high volume low. Even going back yeah. to the breakout area. Yeah, you know, the breakout area had 91 million shares. I'm talking about the SPY now. And it hit 104 million. When we did, you know, when you, if I go all the way back to that, that May, you know, we really broke topside. That's what it did. Right. So, so you know, the, the question is, you know, sometimes these uh, panic lows are not tested like until a month later. Yeah, sometimes right. Maybe yep. you know, and that's with the you. dilemma. Yep. So we're setting near a low, but is yesterday the low, or do we go down tomorrow and test that low, or do we test it a month from now? And that's the problem with Jekyll analysis, you know. Exactly. You know, yeah. uh, and also the the volume. Uh, today is going to be really important. We test that gap uh, of two days ago, yeah, two days ago, on high, uh, on equal volume. That's all it needs. Then probably the low is yesterday. So that's what my dilemma is today. Do I buy today or do I take a chance that yesterday's low could be tested? When you say so two days I, ago, now are we talking um, on Tuesday or Monday? Let's see. Today, Thursday, Wednesday, be Tuesday. Tuesday. So Tuesday. Tuesday look, see if you look at. Yeah, we did 96 million. We're not going to do 96 million today. We're at 73. Uh, you'd be surprised. You're this close. A lot of times that volume comes in. See, the spy doesn't, volume wise, it goes all the way to 450. Oh, yeah, no, no. I, also, I get that. I'm, I'm speculating, but I get that. But yeah, you know. It, 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 I, I, sometimes I'm really surprised all this volume kind of comes in on. Yeah, oh, on there's the no close. doubt. There's a huge amount of volume at the close. Uh, there's no doubt. Yeah. Particularly yeah, so. in the and the small caps that blows my mind. The, the IWM, the amount of volume that comes in at the close is like insanity. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I you know. So, anyway, I'm trying to figure that out. So, you know, I got some evidence that we're low. I thought we wouldn't get to 420, and actually, we we didn't quite get to 420, which is I'm calling support. 
Uh, do I have a ch- chart of that? Yeah, if you go to chart four. Yep. If you can pull that up, I have a four, that dotted blue line across the chart. Um, yes. That's that 420 area. Normally, you kind of slam against it, and we didn't, we didn't, you know, we didn't quite touch it. So that worries me a little bit. But, you know, to, to me, when, you know, if we've seen a, a lot higher trend readings over the last uh, um, couple of days, I've been a lot happier. But, yeah. you know, maybe we're setting at a low here. My, my chances are... I don't think we're going to blow, keep blowing down here. I think we're, at worst, we're going to test yesterday's low, and uh, we, we may not even test that low. So, uh, stay right uh, there, Tim. We got one more out. segment. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow up 79, NASDAQ up 101, S&P's up 21. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrial's up 92, NASDAQ's up 104, S&P's up 22. We're talking about a man, Mr. Tim Wood. Tim, let me ask you, you know, I, I know you, you, you've, you've been educated us on all these different types of um, technicals that you look at, and, you know, explaining that you would have much rather the trend get to the 1.20, because the fact of the matter is you're saying that was your bread and butter. If you, if you could put them in order... And this, I know it's a tough question, but if you could put them in order, what would the best order that you would like to see for a bottom? Uh, well, actually, the trend over the years has always been, I, I, I screwed with it, actually went away from it for a while. But the trend over the years has always had the most consistent yeah. Yeah. Um, right. uh, success ratio. And I used to do a lot of stuff with the ticks, right. but uh, I, I do... Uh, and the only reason why I kind of shied away, not shied away from it, but uh, I get my charts through stock charts. Yes. And and uh, they quit doing the ticks. I see. Tick at all. There's no, uh, and I was I was coming up with some combination. I was multiplying the trend times the tick. Okay. And I was start I was starting to see some evidence of. So now you're, you're taking the trend times the ticks on the close, and I was coming up with you know a, a, some pretty good numbers identifying the low and all of a sudden the, their tick stuff doesn't, doesn't generate anymore. I see. And it's hard to do other, uh, but I wish I had that back because I could really go far with that because I understand ticks. Uh, matter of fact, when we first met, right? you know, I was doing more stuff with the ticks than I was with the trend. Oh, let me tell you something, yeah. man. The, the ticks to me, still to this day, I mean, at, at that 2007 low, I almost got blown out of the water, but the bottom line is I didn't the actual day of the low because, and what ended up happening, Larry Pesavento and myself were on the phone together because just like you and I used to trade on the phone together, that's what we were doing. Mm-hmm. And that f- second tick came in, man, and I said, no, this is it, man. This is it. And sure enough, it was, and then it took off like a rocket ship, man. Uh, because yeah. there, was, there was so many that came in simultaneously, do you know what I mean? So I know what you're saying, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, if you look over, you know, the last, uh, I'll just read you the last four days on the close. I do this manually now. Yes. So we had 502 yesterday, 4 and 3, 33 the day before, 326 the day before that, 390 before that. So you got four days of just constant down tick uh, readings on the close. So that, the ticks is kind of really blowing out to the downside. That's the reason, one of the reasons why I'm kind of leaning bullish here. The trend is okay. But if I had more evidence taking the, the tick times the trend, I bet just from looking at this, I'd probably be getting a signal uh, yeah. today, or if not yesterday. Okay, uh, cool. So, so I'm kind of, let's take one more chart. To take a look at chart five. Chart five, okay. I got it. There we and, go. Yeah, yep. the, yeah. this is a way from, this chart goes back to 2000, mid-2014. And so this looks at the <coughs> bigger picture. It doesn't tell you exactly where the day of the low is, but it does get you in the vicinity of where that low is. And all those red lines and all that shaded area are times when the uh, the bottom window is the equity put-call ratio readings. It's a CBOE. In other words, it's a put-call ratio reading for the equities yeah. on a 21-day average. The next one up is a, a five-day. And so when you get a 21-day, which is basically a, a whole month. Yes, of of uh, daily put call ratio readings, and so you got people just re- leaning on the puts here uh, on a monthly time frame, and actually on a weekly time ca- time frame because the five day 
trends up there too. So, uh, so this market's not in a crash mode at all. It, you know, people are pretty bearish here for whatever reason, and so that's one of the reasons why I wasn't kind of shy going short because everybody else is short or, or, or in puts, uh, which is another way to be short. So I kind of stayed stay away from the short side. Right. But now I want to lean on the long side because everybody is on the put side. Oh, for sure. So, and you know what's amazing, so I'm actually? To, what so, was, so I'm trying to figure out what day are we talking here. Are I know. Are we talking yesterday, today, or first part of next week? But right. It's not months away. Uh, whatever this low is, it's, it's close. Yeah, no, I, so. I, can, I can see what you're saying. The amazing part, Tim, is that we have actually haven't come down that much. And like we no. just brought up the aspect of, you know, a full 21 days. And it, the average is 21 days, trading days in a month, folks. Okay, so it's a full month that you have had people, you know, basically, you know, loading up on the short side. And this market is not down at all, you know, for something like that. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's down. But yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they waited, you know, and, and and they kind of remained low, you know, it's it's another it's another fear thing going on. You know, people are fearful of the market going down, so they buy puts. So that's kind of like a fear thing going on. Yes. So, I mean, and, and they're putting their money in it. You know, these are actually transactions. This is not like hypothetical. Oh, yeah. yeah no, no, go, no. I did, you know. You so, know. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's no doubt, and you know, if we if we even go back to May, you know, when you picked out that bottom there, I was like really surprised that the fear could come in so quick. You know, the, yeah. that's what it seems like we've had happen here. That you know, you just pull back a little, and and I I can get that just if I, if I wasn't you know into technicals as much, I could get it because. You know, we've been going up for so long, man. It's like, you know, it's like one of these deals that, okay, how much further can you actually go? But guess what? We know that you can just go to the freaking moon. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you can. So that's why this is, you know, going back to the VIX, that one chart, chart six I should, we yes. talked about, you know, that VIX just screamed up. And right. you know, that's a good sign to find balls. You know, if the market's going down, that VIX is not moving you know, high or very fast, and the trend's not moving, and the uh, ticks are not really moving a lot, you know, that's a disaster. You know, you, right. you've got a big hole you're going to fall in, you know, yeah. the market's going to fall in. So, you know, when the market does fall, and those and those ticks and vixes and book call ratio readings don't respond, that means this market's going down big. So, yeah. and, and we folks, didn't have that. Everybody, everything's kind of responding right now. Not as much as it did back in the, the bottom we had back in May or so. Because that was a long, lingered bottom building process. Because we went sideways in that market for about a year. Yes. So, uh, so I'm thinking in general, we're just, a, this is a minor, you know, like a, a wave two going on of a bigger wave three going up, or maybe this is wave four, then maybe five is, you know, next one up or something. Yeah, and know. so when I, Tim... I'm not an expert in Elliott Wave. No, so. and when Tim's talking ticks, folks, okay, just to give you an idea, you know, we started out, you know, in uh, four, eight, in 10 trading days, we went from 1268 up to a high yesterday of 1971. And we blew away the last high that was established out here in May. And we didn't get to the high that was established in uh, May of last year, but uh, May of, of, of August. We blew away August. We didn't get to May. So that was quite an acceleration, quite a fast acceleration, actually, you know, on the way up. Yeah. 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 Because, you know, people were caught short, I think. Yes. And, uh, no, so I, absolutely. Kind of, uh, accelerates the market to the upside. And that's kind of what you, you want to see. And that's why I'm thinking here we got, you know, some, you know, everybody thinks this is just a minor bounce today and it could be but i don't know i, I gotta make a decision here you know over the next 10 15 minutes you know do i go long or not and, uh, i I'm know kind of looking at it you gotta love markets to... man tim it's always a pleasure you have a great weekend a safe weekend of course we uh, look forward to uh, talking to you next tuesday all right thanks man love you man have a great i love you man